Hello everyone, Spazzy Dragon here, and welcome to my tutorial explaining how to set up a trading character. So, if you watched some of my older videos, you probably have seen the Discovery Freelancer Let's Play, where I sort of skim over this sort of topic a little bit, but I never really went into detail, not to mention I sort of stop at medium transports, but I think now it's time to just look back and do this properly. So as you probably understand that, uh, being a roleplay server, you will need to make multiple characters. This is not the sort of game where you just stick to one character. You want to make maybe a Liberty Navy character, make a rogue, make a hacker, plane hacker. Uh, maybe you want to go to the outcast side, maybe the corsair side. You will need money in any way. And that's just one of the things. If you want to have a ve very comfortable, so to speak, roleplay character, you will need funding for this. And that is what trading is all about. Now, I obviously already covered mining in my second half, and I don't really think there's too much to add. Uh, hopefully. Maybe I will make a video on this later. But I want to quickly recap the things I told about trading, and pretty much the progression itself, and some pros, some cons, some tips you need to uh, think about, and uh, just something you need to something to keep in mind when you're creating a character like this. Uh, first things first, when you start off on our server you probably notice that you are starting pretty much like any other uh, freelancer server, you don't have all of the reputations unlocked, you barely have anything on your map if we go to the universe map, you know where the actual vanilla systems are, obviously there's a lot more over there and everywhere, none of the omegas are mapped. Uh, you know where the vanilla systems are, but you obviously need to actually explore them. The thing about uh, Training Hover is that even though this game's name is Discovery, a lot of people will agree that the true purpose of this game is to actually roleplay and interact with characters, and as I already stated, you actually need in-game credits for this, so maybe you will want to sacrifice the whole discovery aspect to at least make yourself a proper trading character because this is um, this is probably the first thing you want to do. I I've seen people trying to uh, start playing on this game without making a dedicated um, trading character. It works, yes, but at some point you will want to settle down and they're like, okay, I don't have money, what do now? So, first of all, there's two ways to do this. You can uh, start off from the beginning and pretty much go from zero and then get yourself a ship. Or you can go to the forums and perhaps join a trading faction. A lot of trading factions actually offer their uh, recruits, especially if they're new to the server, they will provide you with a medium class transport with a cargo hull of 3000. Uh, another idea is that you might want to take a loan. Uh, but the thing about the loan is the fact that you are essentially getting 150 million credits, which you will need to um, get back to the person whoever gave you the money, plus interest. But that only works if you actually know the routes you want to take with that character, right? So this is going to be a video on how to maximize your profit on a trader, at least from what I know. Again, I need to remind you that everything that I say in this video comes from my own experience as a player on Discovery and may not, you know, be the same as the views of the general population, the gen general community, or what they think might be a good thing to teach to new players. So, with that in mind, let's start with the very basics. Let's just say that uh, I'm not going to cover the whole loan thing because that you can uh, check for yourself on the forums and quite frankly I don't, I've never taken a loan and I don't like to take loans because I'm not sure how much time I have to play freelancers so, you know, it, it will be a very bad thing to do and obviously if you try to scam someone then you are going to get your asshole torn by the admin team so that's just something you want to keep in mind if you want to get some very easy money by doing something completely retarded. As I already said in the first episode of my Let's Play, restarts are vital. The restart basically gives you a ship and ID of your choosing um, as long as you know the reputation and everything. So to access these restart functions you again need to open up your chat, type in slash show 
restarts in one sentence without spaces. And this is the list of restart functions you have. Obviously I'm currently playing on my server because the official server is down as I'm recording this video. And hopefully this is going to be interesting for you nonetheless. A lot of players would say that the best ways to start is using the beginner restart, though the beginner restart I think is a bit more different on the uh, official server than it is online, but well, let's try anyway. Restart beginner. And it's going to say you're going to be kicked, wait 10 seconds before reconnecting. Alright, as you can see I'm back on the server and we have a different sort of ship. As you can see this is a civilian freighter it has half a thousand cargo space, which is a very good thing to have. It means you instantly need, you instantly can skip over everything else. The only problem that I see uh, right from the get-go is the fact that you start off with a minor ID for some reason, which obviously means that you're going to be hostile to every single um, pirate-oriented faction, like the Corsairs, Liberty Rogues, Outcasts, Red Hessians, and so on. But, well, fair enough, you can't really get everything. The alternative to the beginner restart is in fact uh, a freelancer restart, which I would actually suggest you take instead. So yeah, let's actually go with that. If anything, it will just simply add one more step. You will need to actually get to a freighter first. Well, as you can see, I just used the freelancer restart and I'm back in a Stargazer shuttle. But at least now I have most, at least most, of the pirate factions at least neutral. As you can, Corsairs are neutral, Outcasts are neutral. This is all I need. The thing about... Uh, now, obviously, you might be asking yourself, okay, so what's the deal with these restarts? And as I already mentioned in the first episode of my Let's Play, the reason for this is the fact that you get all of the vanilla map out, uh, updated, everything up to... Nagano and down to Omega 11 and Connecticut as well. Now the reason for this is that if you want to make a good trader you need to know where to actually take your stuff to and in this case uh, we are going to start off in Coronado. The only problem with this restart is the fact that again you don't get a shuttle right off the bat but that's okay. I think I already covered how to get out of this uh, shuttle, so we're just going to fly to New York real quick and uh, get some sort of funding. So well, here we are back in New York, next to Rochester base, it's the Junker base behind Manhattan here. And as I already mentioned in that first video, mining for scrap is probably one of the easiest ways you can get some first money. As you can see, I'm already full. Mining scrap does not require any sort of special um, turrets like mining turrets or a special ID, although obviously if you use a junker ID you will get a, a much bigger drop when it comes to scrap mining. But again, this should be enough. As you can see, they sell for almost 1000 per unit, so all you need to be is a bit patient and just keep grinding scrap metal until you can buy a freighter. Or if you don't want to grind, you can always just, you know, <laughs> just ask someone if they can start you off with a 1 million or so. Shouldn't be too hard, obviously. Although I suggest um, trying to roleplay first and just roleplay a guy who just started to, you know, fly around. Because uh, going through the player list and actually begging for money is a very good way to piss people off at best and getting sanctioned at worst. So I'm currently docked on planet Pittsburgh, right here in New York again, and uh, this is one of my, fo uh, my one of my own personal favorites, the Kamara. As you can see, it has a 630 cargo hold. It's arguably one of the best freighters for a new player, and actually for old players alike. The reason for this is that it actually has a lot of heavy fighter turrets. So if you know how to fight you'll be able to use them pretty well, but in our case we just need it for the actual, you know, for the good cargo space. Now remember that if you're buying a ship you actually need to transfer the ID, so this is just something you don't don't really want to forget. And um, on a similar note, when you're making a trader, 
something you quickly need to understand is the fact that pirates are a thing and they are going to pirate you, blow you up, take your cargo, tell that you suck, so on and so on. So I already covered things like armor upgrades, I'm going to make a different video about any, uh, you know, external and internal equipment anyway. But uh, something that I already see that we don't have on this planet is a decent scanner. The problem with the one we're using right now is that the detection range is 2.5k. It means that the player needs to be almost nose to nose to, uh, with you if you want to see him on the scanner, which is, as you might understand, is not really profitable, especially if you run into pirates. So. This is a common mistake you can see in uh, new players when they make a trader. They're using the regular scanner and they just keep bumping into pirates. So this is probably the first thing you will need to fix. I have no idea why Pittsburgh doesn't sell it, but this uh, scanner, which I'm going to show you in a moment, should be sold on any capital planet or, you know, actually, I think it should be sold on any station anyway. So, as I'm recording this video, it is April 8th, so this might not be relevant if you see this video in about half a year or something, because I have no idea what sort of updates they make by then. But right now we have only three types of scanners. We used to have more, but right now there's three main types of scanners that you can see right here. I have no idea why Pittsburgh didn't have them. We have the regular scanner, which comes with any newbie ship, which is utter trash, as already said, and needs to be removed from your ship as fast as possible. That leaves us with two other types of scanners. One is the advanced deep scanner, and one is the cargo scanner. As you can see, the difference is actually... Okay, so apparently the difference is that uh, scanner stats are actually controlled server-side, and my server has the default stats. On our main server, the range for a deep scanner is 1.4 uh, well, just 14,000 meters, and the cargo scan is about 3, while the advanced cargo scanner is about 10 and like 9 or something along those lines. Anyway, if you're flying, you need a deep scanner because otherwise you don't for a trader anyway, a deep scanner is much more important than a cargo scanner because it will allow you to see pirates from far away. If they are sitting on the lane, for example, then you will be at least... you will have a chance to jump out early and turn around and try to get back into the lane as fast as you can. But okay, let's just keep in mind that, again, this is just based on experience and maybe you'll have it better, maybe you'll have it worse. That's just something you need to keep in mind. So, as you will progress through the freighter, you will get about 7 million credits, and at that point you will be able to uh, finally buy your first transport. Um, as I remind you, the transport is any sort of cargo ship which is meant for trading, and has a cargo capacity of over X. I can't remember what it is, but it's over X. And if I'm not mistaken, you can uh, you can find this ship right here on Manhattan. Well, it looks like I was wrong. You can't find a regular gull on Manhattan anymore, but you can find the Mammoth. So a Mammoth is actually a very good ship. It's quite cheap. As you can see, it's only 10 million credits, which on a Kamara you will be able to get in a very short time. The only downside to this is the fact that, well, it's not a downside, uh, let me finish my train of thought. As you can see, it's actually very cheap. It's 10, th uh, 10 million credits for 2.2 thousand cargo space, and that is very good. And not to mention this thing does have a very interesting handling. It's, it's a pretty light, medium transport, and it's very fun to pl uh, fly. The only problem, as I said, is the fact it is still a Liberty transport. As you can see by the ex uh, insignia, it is a... Liberty transport in in the description. It means that if you go somewhere where Libertonians are not really like, for example, Rainland, you are probably gonna get shot. Uh, the same applies with people who think that, well, after a medium transport 2.2, then the logical conclusion would be to upgrade to a 3k or 3.4k transport. So one of those choices is the behemoth Rainland medium transport, which is a very good transport, but again, 
just like the Liberty Transport in Rainland. A Rainland Transport is not welcome in Liberty, and you are going to be treated as a criminal at best and a hostile at worst. So, Spazzy, I hear you ask. Okay, so, fair enough. You need to be careful about what sort of transport you choose. But don't civilians have something neutral where I can go wherever? Yes, yes they do, and it's sold right back here in Coronado, where you started off when you used the Freelancer Restart. And here we can find the two most popular transports, by the way. One is the Firefly, an import from Firefly, which, by the way, is going to get a new model sometime soon. And then we have the Borwald Transport. As you can see, they are very close when it comes to uh, prices. Uh, both of them have 3.5k of cargo space. Uh, the only difference you can see is that the Borwald's transport has nine guns and the Firefly has eight. Um, I'm not sure right now, but as far as I know, the Firefly can only fire four forward and four in reverse, while the Borwald's transport can fire five or more. I'm not exactly sure. It's been a while since I've flown these ships, but it pretty much goes down to the fact that you probably won't need guns anyway because the best way to survive a pirate encounter is to never meet the pirate in the first place and that actually is going to bring us to my next point in this video evading pirates all right so the borobolt transport can fire seven guns forward and a lot them to the sides but only two. So basically this thing has a lot more forward firepower than it has rear firepower, but again, as I already said, being a transport, especially a trader, if, you know, unless you're using a pirate uh, transport to pirate, then uh, being able to go around any sort of danger is probably your best bet, and there is a lot of ways you can do that. Uh, before we go further, as you understand, this is a medium transport and this is where things start being serious because uh, most people actually say that uh, going further than a medium transport is technically not really needed. You have a freelancer ID and as you can see the freelancer ID has a cargo limit right here. It says cannot use any transport with more than 300 and uh, sorry 3600 cargo except for the pirate train which as you might have guessed, uh, is not really welcome in lawful space, so, you know, just something you need to keep in mind. In any case, if you are within doubt whether or not some sort of ship is allowed somewhere, just go and read the rules of Sirius, sorry, laws of Sirius, to get some uh, roleplay explanation of what can go where, and this is going to be something you need to know as a freelancer, because as a freelancer, which, by the way, is, a, is the point why a lot of people don't go further than a um, medium transport, is the fact that you have a very wide zone zone of influence. But technically, you have an unlimited zone of influence on this thing, and it means that you can fly wherever the hell you want. With the obvious roleplay consequences, obviously, but you get what I'm saying, right? So you already heard me say that a lot of people actually prefer staying with a medium transport, so why is that the case? Um, obviously medium transports have a lot less cargo space than 5,000, you know, the largest transports in the game if you don't count the barge. But the thing about the medium transport is that it's a lot more versatile and the fact that you have a freelancer ID and you can go wherever you want. So we're just going to start with that thing. As you can see, this is a fully decked out transport. I have everything. I have a shield. I have pretty much very good turrets. I have a cruise disruptor, which is uh, which comes in handy. If you want, you can go and look at my NPC piracy tutorial. Um, and uh, obviously, I also have a countermeasure, something that large transports don't have. They're highly susceptible to pirates because they can't, uh, they are very easy to disrupt. You can pin a large transport down pretty easily, and as you might expect, even though the large transports have a lot more armor, they still die pretty easily to a even a single bomber. So here we are on planet Kyushu, the Kyushu system, as you might expect. This is one of the systems on top of the Sirius sector in Kasari. 
and here we're going to pick up our first goods. Now the thing about Freelancer in general was it's uh, pretty much a space trading um, combat simulator, so obviously trading is one of the best ways to earn money when you don't want to really, you know, fuck around. Um, arguably mining is the best way to earn very quick cash, but uh, in my opinion it's a little bit more stressful, a little bit more dull, but well, to be fair, flying from point A from point B to point C is not really all that more fun either. But here's the thing: you might mention, you might have noticed I said from point A from point B to point C, and yes, that is the case because the thing is, uh, Discovery Freelancer tries its best to eliminate any point A point B roads. It means that you bring something somewhere, you pick up something else, go to uh, some somewhere else and so on and so on. As you can see, we have Kyushu Rice here. And this is exactly the moment, what I've been uh, waiting to tell you, why we're using that restart, uh, <coughs> uh, restart again. Uh, it's because you can actually see the best cell points without actually having to visit these stations, and that is vital to, you know, any trading character. Uh, keep in mind that er all of this information which is here is going to be useful to you only if you've played Freelancer before, which I understand is not really the case for many people. But for example, we uh, have a very good sell point in back in Liberty, where's uh, Planet Erie, Pennsylvania, which is the starting system and the starting base where we started. Yep. So this is just a way to actually go there. So we're just going to take that, buy it all. And as we're going to get there, I'm going to talk about piracy again. So we're currently uh, getting towards Shikoku, which is one of the systems we need to pass through in order to get to Liberty. The thing about piracy is the fact that uh, technically, the more you play a pirate, the better you know how to evade one, and the more you play a trader, the more you know where to pirate on your pirate. That's just something that comes with experience. That's not. That's just something I can't explain to you. But this is. Uh, but here's something I can explain to you. So if we are going to look at where we are right now, we are at, uh, going to be at Shikoku. As you can see, this is uh, something we would like to call a bottleneck system. Uh, obviously, as a trader, you're probably going to be using only trade lanes, and. As you can see, there's only one trade lane here, and uh, both of these trade lane segments are very long. It means that there's a very big chance that a pirate is waiting for them, uh, for you on these lanes. So this is just something that you need to keep in mind. The player list is your biggest friend, because if you open a playlist, obviously I'm currently on my service, so this is not really a very good way to show this. So on the server you would uh, have all these players um, doing whatever they're doing on the server right now. So you'd usually sort them by system and take a look what is going on in Shikoku. If you see that there's someone in Shikoku, you might want to think about whether or not you already see him killing someone on the chat list, obviously, if you don't have it um, disabled. So this is just one of those tricks. Um, if you're uh, going to play a uh, trader, you might want not to disable death messages. I, I've heard people say, I, I really don't like these red messages popping up every time someone kills someone. They're highly annoying. Yeah, but when you're on a trader, you probably want to know these, because um, if, you, if you see these people killing them, it's like, oh, okay, that guy killed someone, oh, there he goes, <laughs> killed some, he just Suki killed something else, and I just, I just sort of fucked up, sorry about that. Oh, I just said the F word. Uh, yeah, the, 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 <laughs> if you want you can just go back to the video like two seconds ago and see what I exactly did. I just clicked an NPC that was docking and I pressed the F4 button. This is a trick I'm going to return in a moment because this is just something you... Again, this is just a trick that you want to know. Okay. So as I was saying, if you see that this guy that has been killing people is in Shikoku, chances are it is a pirate, and chances are he's on one of the lanes. 
I can't really say which lane is more populated these days when it comes to Shikoku. When I'm on my part, I like to sit on this one. But again, that is completely personal experience. So the question is, how do you go through systems? You know what? I understand this is space, but seriously, you have all this space around us and you still bump it to me, you stupid NPC, I swear to God. Alright, so let's just say that we know that there's some player in this system has who has been shooting a lot of people and killing a lot of people. Chances are it is a pirate. And uh, in our case, okay, fair enough, we only have Kyushu Rice. It cost us about half a million to buy it. And this is going to... We're going to bring it to Planet Erie, so... This is going to give us like, what, six to seven million worth of income. We could technically pay a pirate for, for what, two million credits. But if you are very uh, uncomfortable to paying someone for something you are doing, then there's a way to avoid that, and that is just not by it. It's, it's pretty much comes down to not taking the lanes if you are in a system which has some sort of pirate activity. Now, obviously, these pirates could also be sitting at jump gates, but these days the jump gate uh, pulse cannons are sort of annoying, and you have NPCs uh, on which you can F4 enter formation to jump through the gate, and the pirate can't. Technically, abusing game uh, game mechanics, but again, it's really stupid for a pirate to sit on a gate anyway. So. What we're going to do now is fly alongside the trade lane, staying as far as uh, far away from the actual trade lane as possible. And as such, yes, it is going to be a very long trip, but if you really don't want to run, uh, run into a pirate, especially, for example, if you are taking some kind of ore which is worth like 40 million credits on that ship, then yeah, you, you might want to do this. You can fly next to the trade lanes, you can fly above the plane, you have uh, everything. You have any choice to avoid a pirate interaction by just not uh, meeting the pirate. Again, the best way to um, not get killed by pirates or not get pirated is simply not to encounter the pirate in the first place. But again, it all depends on who who you're uh, flying against. Uh, I know a lot of pirate groups who actually have um, some sort of dedicated ship which has a battleship scanner, and the battleship scanner can detect uh, people from 20k away. And if they see that there's someone uh, pop who just popped up there, uh, for the sake of example, let's just set a coordinate. As you can see, I'm I'm taking it very easy. I'm taking it just in case, and I'm flying like 24k away from the trade lane, even if they have a battleship scanner, they probably wouldn't be able to see me, and this is just something I would highly recommend to you. It all depends on whether or not you can um, afford getting pirated. If you already have been pirated before and you don't want to lose more money, then yes, maybe flying all tabbed from point A to point B just to avoid the pirate is probably a better choice. But if you're feeling that, you know, 2 million credits is probably not that big of a deal, especially if you're flying something bigger, then again, it is up to you whether or not you want to give the pirate that encounter or not. Most pirates uh, are pirating for the roleplay, but, you know, there are some people who are just not that good and they are probably going just... They just want a free kill or just want to troll you. But again, these people are very easy to spot, and if you've had that sort of bad encounter once, you probably re you'll probably remember the guy's name anyway. But again, naming convention is also something we'll need to talk about in a moment. If you're the sort of player who enjoys his snub ships and uh, don't really want anything bigger, then probably a medium transport is everything you need. Uh, you can set up a very heavy fighter for about 20 million credits, or if you buy it off the forums, even cheaper. And that's the sort of money you can easily make in a medium transport. But let's just say you want something bigger. So this is where things get a tiny little bit complicated when it, terms, uh, when it comes to actually setting it up and planning your trade routes. And one of the reasons 
is actually getting the correct ID. As I already mentioned before, we're currently flying a freelancer ID, which allows us to fly any ship up to 3,600 cargo or the pirate train. Now the pirate train is actually pretty large, although not the largest ship in the game, and you are highly limited to only specific areas of Sirius where the pirate train is not getting shot by lawfuls. And the ones that I can think of straight from the get-go is probably Rainland but I might, I might be mistaken, and by the time you're watching this video, it might be outdated, so that's just something to keep in mind. If you're going to fly a pirate train on the Freelancer ID just for the cargo space, you really need to rethink where you want to go and how the people are going to react to you. But okay, so let's just say that after a lot of grinding, you have finally gotten 160 million credits and you are ready to expand. And, as you can see, this is a super train, the Liberty Super Transport. It has 5,000 cargo space, which is the biggest cargo space there is when it comes to publicly available transports. Well, here's the thing. So, obviously, we need an ID that allows us to fly this thing, and... Uh, luckily for us, this station does sell one. It's... Or does it? Huh. There we go. <laughs> I just realized I didn't have the correct reputation. And yeah, that's that's just something you will need to make sure. Uh, if you want to get a ID, you need the reputation. So getting a reputation is probably the first thing you need to do before buying a ship. So the Deep Space Engineering ID. Deep Space Engineering is a... Liberty Industrial Corporation, which specializes in heavy industry and shipbuilding. Fair enough, and as you can see, this is a lawful ID, and you have no way, no place in this ID that says you can't use uh, some sort of ship when it comes to cargo space. So we're just going to buy that ID, and then we're going to buy the Liberty Super Train. Remember, again, you need to transfer the ID, otherwise bad things are going to happen. Also, the scanner. The scanner is always top, uh, top priority. And you will probably want to swap this light transport graviton shield for something bigger, just in case. Well, before you are going to buy the ship, you already see one of the biggest minuses when it comes to large ships like this. It doesn't have a CM. It's it only has one turret, which obviously fires only backwards, and you only have one CM, no CD, no nothing. You have a decent amount of cargo, uh, sorry, a uh, decent amount of armor, if you mount an armor upgrade, which is a must, by the way. Then you will have some chance to get away from a pirate, at least try and make it to the closest um, base, or at least somehow save yourself, but again, this just this sort of thing. If you're flying a 5k, you need a armor upgrade, and I think that if you have the money to buy a 5k, you you shouldn't really waste time and just buy an armor uh, 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 just a regular armor upgrade Mark 8. It multiplies your hull by 2.5, that's like 150% kinda, and occupies only 20, you're losing only 20 cargo space from 5,000, so don't be a, I almost say the J word, but you know, you get the idea. Your cargo <laughs> well, as you can see, command. that is one very large ship, and to be fair, I really like how these things are designed. Depends, obviously depends on the transport itself, but again, these ships look fantastic. The only downside, as you might have imagined, is they are terribly slow and cumbersome. Their maximum thrust speed is very limited as well, and some of them have pretty serious issues trying to get in trade lanes, and that could be pretty annoying at times, but, well, fair enough. I actually know a few uh, ships that still manage to be smaller and have bigger problems entering a trade lane. I'm looking at you, Liberty Siege Cruiser. 
Okay, so this is a very good example. We are approaching a jump gate, and uh, there is an NPC patrol that is taking it. So, usually if you're trying to dock right now, as I am, you are entering the queue, and you are going to jump through when the NPC is going to pass, right? Fair enough. But uh, if there's a pirate after you, you don't really have time to wait, right? Or you're just in a very in impatient man, so... You know, that's just something you need to keep in mind. So, right now, I'm going to try my best and uh, show you a little neat little trick on how to bypass this, just the way I did that uh, moment, like, a few minutes ago in the video. Uh, something to keep in mind with these IDs is that, again, when if you want a larger ship, then uh, it pretty much means that you're giving up a lot of freedom. The Freelancer ID, as you might have guessed, allows a lot of freedom. It has a unlimited zone of influence, while things like, like the one we're currently using, a Libertonian one, has its own problems, that it can't go anywhere, it can only dock on lawful bases, and so on and so on. It's the price of being able to make a lot more money against being able to go everywhere. And uh, at first it may not really sound that bad until you start thinking about pirates again. And here is where things get a little bit more serious. As you can see, we're back in Shikoku, where I, um, first of all, I said there was an Im imaginary pirate here. And here's the problem. Uh, pirates love 5Kers. Uh, they love blowing them up, they love pirating them, and just being complete nuisances. The thing about 5Kers, though, is the fact that if you're using a 5 care, five well, as uh, again, it's pretty much like that. Uh, the problem is that if they do block jump gates and there's no way you can avoid a pirate and they're going to tax you every <clears throat> sorry every time you're going to go through then obviously the best choice is to simply take a different trade route but the, that's the thing about large transports you're pretty much limited to your ID and when it comes to the DSC ID there's only that many choices when it comes to trade routes you can pick if you were still in a medium transport and you had a freelancer ID, it wouldn't be a problem. You could just go, like, across the whole freaking map of Sirius. Like, <laughs> we're currently in Kasari, you can just go like, Mwink! go to Bretonia and go through Bretonia to Rainland and trade there. But, again, this is just one of the downsides when it comes to large ships, and that's just something you need to keep in mind if you want to buy one. At some point, you're probably going to have a lot of money, so I suggest investing in a few transports, just in case. If you're being targeted by someone, then maybe it's time to switch to a different character altogether. With all this talk about ship usage IDs and so on, I forgot to mention something a bit more crucial. There's two types of trade roads. One is the one I was already showing you with the Kasari Rice one. It's pretty much flying through Kasari, back to Liberty, taking something to uh, from Liberty, flying back to Kasari. That, fair enough, right? But there is another type of trade route which is called the inner, um, inner house trade routes. It means that you're not leaving Liberty, you're constantly trading within Liberty. Uh, obviously, the amount you get from flying t from one station to another only two systems away is obviously going to be a lot less per unit than, say, flying from Planet Erie from Pennsylvania all the way back to Kyushu and Kasari, obviously. But the thing about inner house trading is that there is uh, a very good upside. It might be just a tad little bit less... Uh, good when it comes to actual pure income, but that's the thing. You are moving around two systems, usually, and that is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, the more systems you usually move through, the bigger the chance you are going to encounter a pirate. So, obviously, a pirate is pretty much the biggest reason why you wouldn't make some sort of money, because you're losing it to pay tribute, right? So, if you find a very good inter-house route, then you don't have to really worry about that. Because chances are, they're not really going to be there that long, and you can always go around them. The less 
trade row, uh, uh, sorry, the less uh, lanes you need to take, the less the chance you will find a pirate. That's common sense, right? That's common math. The only different, uh, the only exception for this would be it really depends on where you trade, because obviously Liberty is one of the more active parts of Discovery Freelancers, so there's always going to be a pirate around here, so maybe you want to take your time just find a better interhouse road for yourself far away from Liberty. As our video comes to a conclusion, there is another type of trading I want to quickly explain, and that is called smuggling. Now, smuggling in by itself might not be as profitable because it is quite danger dangerous and maybe the actual amount you get is, well, you know, it's a bit more of a hassle. But it's a challenge, and it's a challenge a lot of people like, and a lot of people will eventually want to try for themselves, especially if Discovery gets a little too boring for you. So right here, uh, we are using a medium transport with a freelancer ID because this is essential. There are not many IDs that allow would allow you to smuggle just like that. It because it requires to dock both on unlawful bases like the outcast planet Malta, which is obviously a pirate faction, and for example, Liberty where this cargo is going to go. So what we're going to take from Malta right now is cardamine, which is a a drug more or less. You, you can probably find everything you need to know about the lore when it comes to outcasts. And... Cardamine is a bit of a big deal, just saying. So, here's the thing. We have Cardamine. It's um, pretty expensive to buy. And as you can see, I just made this ship just to show you this. And uh, I, don't ha I didn't restart it. But, let's just say, it costs 2 million credits to buy a full hold for a medium transport with Cardamine. And so, here's the thing. We are going to take this back to Liberty, but to do that we will need to go through places like the Tau-23 system, which is obviously going to be populated by lawful, such as the Independent Miners Guild or the Colonial Republic, which are obviously against uh, smugglers and they're probably going to shoot you for carrying this sort of contraband. Uh, then we have to go through all of the Liberty systems and try your best not to get caught, but here's the thing, it's fun, it's fun to challenge yourself, and, uh, well, you'll see what I mean. Let's just say that we're going to keep flying, and uh, I'm going to start fraps again when we are in Liberty. Now, since I didn't restart the character to show you this, uh, I made a mistake, and as you can see, the rogue faction is actually hostile to me. And, uh, yeah, this is the sort of mistake you don't want to make if you're making a actual smuggler character. You need to be as neutral as possible, and a lot of IDs actually allow you to do that. For example, the Zoner ID, right? You probably won't be able to use a 5 k -er for that, but, again, it pretty much is up to you. Remember that the Zoner 5 k -ers can't, you know, dock in, uh, house space. But, okay, so when it comes to smuggling, there are two types of what you can do. First one, you can play it safe and deliver the goods to the highest, um, highest paying non-lawful base. So, when it comes to cargo mine, it's pretty much either Beaumont or Rochester. Rochester is obviously close to Manhattan, and Beaumont is right here in Texas. You can technically fly all this way without using any sort of trade lanes, just fly off the plane, as I already showed you in the beginning of this video. It's going to take a lot, yes, it's going to take a while, but again, not getting caught is part of the thrill. Obviously, if you want to risk it and um, try to do this a bit more faster, then yes, you can use uh, trade lanes. But as soon as someone is going to see you, oh, they're going to blow the whistle on you so fast. Oh. So here we are in Beaumont in Texas, and we are about to look at the price that we are going to get for these things. So as you can see, Card of Mine actually costs, uh, gives you 14 million, which is obviously a lot more than the 7 million you would get for regular, but just don't don't forget that we actually spend 2 million credits to buy this thing, so that gives us a total profit of 12 million credits for 
whatever time we took to actually get here. But we can earn more. And in order to do that, we need to take a very big risk. And here's the thing. Here's a Liberty Navy NPC scanning me. I'm full of card of mine, mind you. And apparently they don't give uh, two craps about it. So here's the thing. You can get the biggest money when it comes to smuggling if you delivered it to a capital planet. In this case, I'm targeting Manhattan. But here's the thing. You know how we have a, a specific rule that says you need to roleplay, you need to follow the limitations of your ID and everything? And if you are a smart person, you're probably already checking the sanction thresh to see what people are getting sanctioned about. And one of the most common things is people docking with bases even though their owners told them not to. Basically, they're ho um, docking to a hostile base. If you get caught by anyone and they tell you not to dock, if you do dock at this point, just imagine that there is a LNS capital ship right next to Manhattan saying that, Hey you smuggler, don't dock. That's it, you can't dock anymore. If you dock, it means that you've broken this rule and you will be sanctioned. It's a very, very hard thing to... Oh! 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 So yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to get scanned by the NPC, sorry. So yeah, that's the point. Uh, if you want to get the big bank, you want to drop this on Manhattan, and we're going to see just how much. See, it pays for uh, 1,000 more, as you can see. It's like 17 million credits, and that's like, what, a few, a few lanes further off? But again, that's the thing. If you get caught by a lawful player and he tells you not to dock with the base, or you know, just in case. That's it. If you are a smuggler, then yes, you are already hostile to him, so if you dock at that point, he can sanction you. It's it's a very... <laughs> it's a very annoying thing about smuggling, but, but again, the whole point of smuggling is to do this without being seen, so... You're probably going to take a, a chance anyway, so... That's just something you want to keep in mind. This was Fancy Dragon bringing you the basics of getting a pretty much good trading character and just covering the basics. And stay tuned for something else. Maybe a piracy video. Who knows? Fly safe. Hey there, Spazzy Dragon here again, and thank you for sitting through this video. It sort of became a bit a bit, bit longer than I expected. But this is the afterthought to these videos, and I just want to thank people who've donated in-game credits to my bank. And I realize that this, the, the amount that you've donated really requires a video of its own, and yes, it is actually coming as soon as I sell my sh uh, some of my ships to make it a bit more decent. Uh, it's going to be a completely separate video all thanks to you guys and uh, hopefully I will get it out as soon as possible because wow I'm I, I don't even know what to say but just wait and see I haven't forgotten about it spazzy out <laughs>